from the flight deck to your TV set. From the flight deck to your TV set, you're watching Five Minutes with Herb. I'm your host, Herb Jackson, and as always, my goal here is to make this the best five minutes of your day. So I ask that you sit back, relax, and enjoy this show. Welcome aboard. My guest today is a working actor with uh, over 25 credits to his name. Uh, a few of the shows he's been in that I've appreciated watching, um, one of them was the horror anthology slasher, Guilty Party, where he played the role of Peter. Um, also was the coroner, uh, Dr. Dwayne Allen, on the show Coroner. And of course, Power, book two, as my man Drew Tejada. I'd like to welcome aboard Lavelle Adams Gray. Oh, thanks for joining me here today. So hey, as man. they say, you know, everybody has a story. So born in Toronto, uh, give us a little backstory there. Yeah, born and raised in Toronto, uh, currently living in Brampton, um, uh, which is like a, still a part of the greater Toronto area. So uh -huh. whenever anybody asks, I just say I'm from Toronto. Um, uh, yeah, man, went to school, uh, you know, Humber College for film and television acting. And, you know, graduated about like 2012 and just, you know, got catapulted into it, man. Uh, so that first... college uh, that you mentioned, that's, you actually went there specifically for acting, correct? Yep, 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 yep. It was a, it was a program I stumbled upon when I was younger and completely forgot about it. Cause you know, your parents are always like, go to university, go to university. Yeah. So, uh, I was gonna go to university and then this weird mishap happened. I couldn't go to university. Uh -huh. And then, and then I was like, "Oh, but the school is here that I actually wanted to go to when I was a kid." So, yeah. and yeah, it, was, it was perfect. That worked out good. That worked out good. So you you, you go to that school, graduate, and um, you know you kind of work your way up. When when did you like feel the, the first sense of, "Hey, I'm an actor. I've actually made it." Um, when I met this young lady back here, Kiana Madera. Say hi to the people, baby. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> Sneak around. <laughs> <laughs> Bonus um, yesterday, folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, man. Honestly, like, there was. Uh, I can't even think of. Honestly, I can't even think of really a pivotal, pivotal, pivotal moment moment in my career where I was like, oh, I could do this for real. But like, I just think like, I told myself I wasn't gonna stop. Because I noticed that the people that said they wanted to act, act like coming up in my community, acting was just like, a, yeah, I'm going to go do acting. And then like, you know, it's just like a side thing. Yeah. It's mostly like, I'm going to go do, you know, lawyering or some kind of other real job uh -huh. and then act on the side. So um, I got enough encouragement when I was a kid and I had enough like people around me supporting me saying, like, hey, my parents saying, you can stay here as long as you want. Like, <laughs> you know, uh, we have a good relationship. So it was just nice to be able to have a hub that I can work out of. And um, I think, like, from when I booked uh, a role on, um, uh, I'll probably say, like, when I, when I did my first onstage thing outside of, outside of school, that I was like, oh, okay, I can do this. Yeah, I can do that. That's good. That's yeah. good. Yeah. My father always told me, the only way you won't make it is if you quit. Yeah, man. I, and, I totally believe and that. As I go along in life, I, I see and I, you know, speak with folks like yourself, actors, you know, wh whatever they've done in life. Um, that seems to be one of the key things. So many people will start off on something, you know, expect immediate success, which doesn't happen. Um, somewhere along the road, they hit a few bumps and it's kind of like uh, they give up. But those who came in there, persevered, seem to, you know, rise to the top. I feel like the you know the the hard part and the challenge to anything that you want to do in life is that the world is just filled with distractions. Yeah. You know? And especially if like if as a black person, like we have distractions on the daily, right? We have oh, yeah. obligations, you know, community expectations, those kind of things. And then we're inundated with a bunch of, you know, horrible things that we shouldn't have to be privy to in our day-to-day -day lives. So, you know, there's a lot of things that keep you down can keep you down, can mm -hmm. keep you like not wanting to pursue your dreams and your goals for what, for what's the point, you know, I'm going to die at 35 anyways, God forbid. Yeah. So 
I feel like when you are able to transcend those thoughts and those worries and those distractions and you're able to like keep your head down, focus, do something that you really care about and just drill, lock in, you know, like I feel like, you know, that's when God looks at you and goes like, all right, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. That's awesome. So, you know, you, you continue along. Things are going well. And, um, slasher comes up. I mean, dude, we, this guy, Peter, um, that character in that show, uh, I, I'll say my own opinion to her now. Can you go ahead and describe a little bit how it was to uh, to play that role? Um, it was it was amazing to play Peter. That was the first like lead I've ever done, um, like a lead of a television show, lead of anything. And so it, it, I felt I felt very new to the process. I, I had booked a couple of things beforehand, but just going to that, I was like I really wanted to like show my stuff and show what I can do as a, as a lead actor. But it, but it was I feel like. To answer your earlier question about when I felt like it was really like, okay, I could really do this as an actor. I think it was booking that project because prior to that, I had booked a play. So that was, that was actually my first play I actually booked outside of school. Uh-huh. And um, it was something I was really passionate about. Uh, it was a play where we were doing Superior Donuts. And um, I loved, fell in love with the character, fell in love with the story. And I was going to do the play. And I had, I went and auditioned for it. I felt like I laid it all on the floor. I felt so free and so open and so just honest. And then that same day after auditioning for the play, I auditioned for Slasher. And I went in to the room loose, ready to play, ready to just hear anything, receive and go. Uh And it was, I felt very comfortable and very ready to do that work. And so I get the call that I got both the play and the (laughs) show. And so I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna commit to this play. My agent was like, you could, but I also don't think they'd be a, a super upset if you like, you know, left and did the show. Yeah. I was like, ah, I gotta do this. I gotta do the show. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, you know, kind of a no brainer. And it was, it was, um, but it was a very telling moment to me that I was like, okay, like, you know, I'm actually, I actually have some standing here. Yeah, I mean, you booked the lead role. Um, what was that eight episodes in that in yeah. uh, season two? Um, in you know, an anthology. So it's, it's, you're kind of, you know, the history of that, of Slasher. Uh, it, they had auditions for season three and I got one and I was like, I put on all my Peter clothes because I still had the jacket and the hat and everything. And I, and I auditioned with that. <laughs> I was like, y'all don't remember me from season two? Like, was <laughs> how can they not remember you you know what i'm saying i was like hello like Please, give me the the part. just guy, give it to man. me i don't like but but i think that's why i didn't get the part <laughs> i'm like no he's a little too extra for my liking right uh now. yeah peter was a troubled man um mm-hmm. not to give away any spoilers or anything if anyone hasn't seen it but you and your fellow uh camp counselors really got yourselves into a pickle yeah, and, we did. Uh, it seems like you're one of the only ones that actually showed remorse and, and felt bad for all the things that occurred. I feel like we all felt bad, man. I think like, you know, but what do you do in a situation? Like you could either, I feel like you either, if you are ever in a situation, if you don't go immediately to the police, yeah. then what are you really doing? Right. Yeah. Like you've already, you've already wrapped yourself up in this thing that any, the more days pass, the more you're not going to do it. And the further, the more years are added on to your life once you go to jail, like, you know? Yeah. So it's like, what are we really going to do about this? And you guys did waited five years for you to go back. Yeah. So, you know, you know, it's just like either clear your conscience. I'm not a snitch. Peter's not a snitch. So yeah. he's not going to blow the whole squad, but it's just, it's just like, you know, we didn't go to the cops day one. So it just yeah. kind of, we're digging, digging it every single day. We're free. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. So we go from, Slasher, which deals with a lot of death, um, to Dr. Dwayne Allen, the coroner, who you're not on the other side. You're there mm-hmm. trying to understand and figure out people's stories uh, as they're presented to you. Yeah, um, coroner, you know, was it was really amazing. It was the last project I did before my grandfather passed away. Um, and it was a really a big gift for me because... You know, my grandfather, my grandfather was born in the 40s, you know, grew up in the 60s and 70s and uh-huh. was, you know, he had he had his style. And he, he's hip and he had all this, you know, in his uh-huh. youthful days. As he got older, he's like, I don't like to hear all that cussing and I don't like to hear all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But 
So I wanted to do, uh, I was really happy to do a project that one, he saw me as a doctor and, and two, that I wasn't cussing or doing nothing crazy, yeah. you know? Um, so it, was, it really like uh, has a special place in my heart playing Dr. Dwayne Allen. And that was I a, my natural hair. I didn't have to cut it. It was great. <laughs> yeah, you go, go as you want it, huh? And that was, um, I want to say, what, that Dundas or whatever in, in Toronto, the Toronto area filmed a lot up there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we filmed, we mostly filmed out of studio, but uh, we filmed, we filmed, I think, some places in Hamilton, um, close to Dundas Falls. We filmed, you know, in the downtown Toronto core. You yeah, know, we really, like little graffiti alley action in one of the cities too, right? Yeah. Yeah, we, really yeah, yeah. To, we really try to show off Toronto as much as we could, you know? Yeah, it, I, I, Toronto's one of my favorite cities. Um, so I, I thoroughly enjoyed catching up and, and, and watching that show along with, you know, all the others. Um, mm -hmm. So you talk about, unfortunately, not cussing to... <laughs> we go to power. Uh, before we even get into book two, how familiar were you with power before you uh, landed the role? I loved it. I, love, I watched Power, you know, I, I watched Power up until season two initially. Uh -huh. And then, you know, work and everything got caught up with me. So I had to stop watching. But then um, I just something in me told me to watch, continue watching Power. Yeah. And so I jumped back into it around like, I think in 2019. Uh -huh. And I was finishing up, I was getting all caught up. And then I got the audition for Power Book 2. I was like, oh, cool. It was yeah, like nice. more incentive to even make sure I'm, I'm, I'm all caught up and finished. But um, yeah. Yeah, it was it was a show like I was dr drawn to the characters, to Amari Hardwick's work as Ghost, and just getting to see him. Like, I was really, I watched him going like, oh, I want to do that, you know. Yeah, so it was. Um, I was a big fan. And they laid a really good foundation to allow this show to continue on. You know, it, it's it's book two Ghost. There's gonna be what book three Raising Canaan. Mm -hmm. uh, I think before, book four, Tommy's going to be in there, and, and I don't know, it just continues. But had the original show not been so good, I don't think any of these projects would have been possible. I don't even think, but like, I, I can't fathom a world where the show isn't good. You have so many people coming together who are people of faith, who, who really believe in something they're putting out, and are people who actually like are tried and true veterans in the game. You have 50 Cent who like knows how to work and knows how to market and knows business. You have yes. Courtney Kemp who knows how to write her ass off. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? So it's like how, you know, you have you have all these great pieces. It's like anything Golden State Warriors do back in 2017 and before that <laughs> is gonna is gonna be great. You know, anything they touch is great. And I think I think I really think that Courtney and 50 and and stars and everybody who's behind the show, um, they just have great minds and great, you know, they just say yes to good things, you know, yeah. people are scared to take risks and, you know, the people who are behind the show are fearless. And, and, and it shows, I mean, I love, um, you know, in fact, speaking of as, as, from the fan point of view, remember when they changed the intro to power for, I don't know, maybe one or two episodes and yeah. everyone was just like, no, don't change yeah. it. You know, I love Joe and I love the original version, but I, I'm a big fan of Trey songs. Uh -huh. So I didn't mind that much that they changed it a little bit. And it was like a little bit more like upbeat and like fancy kind of fine dining kind of, you know. Yeah. Um, but I, I totally get that. Like there's a very classic and understand like a very at the core is like a very homey feel to the original yes. show song. So I changing it changing it back was a good idea like i didn't think they would i was like no nah, we're gonna keep it like oh, yeah. hey, it back and that was that was i like that yeah the uh i mean i did not like the new intro but it was just you you i don't know you become emotionally attached or whatever to the old one and, and you know every sunday night you know the room's dark you get the lights you turn the lights off and hit the sound up and then you know they say this is a big rich town. I mean, that is just yep. you know, it's on. We're watching power, you know. And when it changed, it's kind of like, ah, come on, man. Yep, 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 yep. So tell us a little bit about Drew, Drew Tejada. Um, you know, he's one of three siblings, um, working with uh, her, his mom and the Tejada family, trying to you know make it work. Mm -hmm. uh, Drew's the middle child, you know, the artist of the family the open heart of one of the family and who I always say is able to see the world through his artist's eyes and see the beauty in the world. Um, 
and reluctant to continue the family business and stuff. But, you know, responsibilities and things get ahead and and you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> and he definitely does do what he has to do, which is, you know, I guess they call the character arc. Um, you wouldn't expect knowing how, like you say, cultured and, and mild-mannered and well-rounded Drew is, but his actions, I mean, you'd never want to cross that dude. No, no, you shouldn't. <laughs> you don't play. And what what about Drew let you know that he plays? You know, like. <laughs> uh-huh. Exactly. <laughs> My man ain't messing around at all. That's right. Since we were talking um, filming season two right now, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. How do the folks out there follow along your journey, um, like social media and stuff like that? Well, you can find me at Lavelle Adams Gray um, on IG. I got rid of my Twitter because Twitter was kind of uh, a little too open and a little too addicting. Yeah. So I was, let me just get rid of it completely, <laughs> you know. Um, but you can find me on there. You can find me on IMDb. Um, and if you're in Canada, you can see some of my work on the CBC, CBC Gem, uh, 21 Black Futures, uh, season three out today. Um, oh, wow. Nice. And uh, yeah, season two should be coming out, you know, just based off of the tra- trajectory later on this year. So, uh, yeah. My man, Lavelle, thank you so much for joining me here today. I really appreciate it. But before we let you go, I got to get you in what we call the lightning round. I'd love to do it. <laughs> you ready for this? Just ask a few questions, you know, get a couple responses and see how things are. Okay. All righty. <sighs> Your newly adopted home of New York. Yeah. Um, has the New York Knicks, and then you have the your home of the Toronto Raptors. They're playing for the Eastern Conference Finals. Who are you going to rep? Raptors. Raptors? Watching television, you love some action shows. Which one do you like better, Spartacus or Game of Thrones? <sighs> ah! <laughs> Game of Thrones. Because, <laughs> because Game of Thrones made me watch Spartacus. Ah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Musically, y'all are, you and I are just going down the road in the car and I pop in some tunes. Who you want to listen to? Little Mary J. Blige or Lupe Fiasco? Uh, Lupe Fiasco. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, Mary, I love you so much. But... It's, all it's all good. Which <laughs> one of these phrases do you live by? Choose wisely or we live as one? We live as one. There you go. There you go. And finally, these two, in my opinion, are two of the least trusted individuals I've ever seen on television. <laughs> Which of these two do you trust least? Okay. Tariq or Talvinda? Talvinda. Yeah, Talvinda. Tal yeah, she Tal definitely. Tal <laughs> Easily. Easily. She was trifling from the jump. <laughs> yeah, she is. She is. Once again, thanks for joining me this afternoon. I do appreciate you, folks. That's another episode of Five Minutes with Herb. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.